good morning sweaters RVing youtubers welcome back we are in Port Augusta we have finished our um, Stewart Highway or the Explorer Way um, little tour up to the Devil's Marbles and back uh, I think up there was about 1700 kilometers so we've done 3400 kilometers amazing trip amazing journey great memories still a few spots there to tick off so uh, who's to say we might go and do it again so um, we made it yesterday into Port Augusta. We're over the other side of the football club. I think they call it Port Augusta Central Football Club, I think it's called. Um, I'll check on that. You'll hear it later on, I hope. Um, and we're going for a little bit of an explore around Port Augusta. Um, there's two or three little key spots that we want to go and have a look at. And then um, a little bit of a stock up because it's one of the biggest centres we've been for, well, Alice Springs uh, was pretty big, I understand. Yeah, it was good, but uh, here's a little different. Uh, I'll just swing around, but just excuse the wind. So we're on the uh, the eastern, no, the western side of this. Uh, I don't think it's a river; it's more a little a uh, uh, little harbour. And uh, over there's the Flinders Rangers. We'll see them a little bit closer later. The township's over this side, and Jude was just walking out on a, a beautiful little uh, jetty and uh, some more hills out in the distance. A great day. Oh, just looking forward to exploring Port Augusta. So let's go and find out. Hello, wakey wakey, rise and shine. Talk about rise and shine. Right, right. Just after leaving the boat ramp is the next spot. I think it was the Arid um, Botanical Gardens. So uh, you're just driving through. <laughs> Yeah, it looks all right, but it looks very much like what we've just all driven through, arid country. <laughs> anyway, a great little vantage point down here. Um, sun glistening in that beautiful reflection of the, uh, this waterway. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's obviously um, an area down and through the port area. But looking on Google um, Maps, all this waterway kind of like extends all the way up through to like, um, what was it, uh, Island Lagoon and Lake Hart, all those areas that we went and visited and further up. So it's obviously, you know, just like a drainage or that catchment or filtration system that all sort of comes through. Don't quote me, but that's kind of like what I think. But this is a, um, what they call Red Cliffs. And uh, you can see up along behind me here, the uh, beautiful banks or cliffs there. They're not cliff cliffs, huge cliffs, but they're very red, beautiful. Um, and then over on the far side there, that's the uh, the Flinders Rangers. Oh, excuse any wind, but that's the Flinders Rangers, which we saw when we we're back in Warnertown, I think it was. And I was looking at, you know, obviously about halfway down, probably not even halfway down, probably quarter of the way down. Um, and over in the distance of the Flinders Rangers, that foot of the Flinders Rangers, um, I don't know whether it's the actual name of it, but I did see a little caption that said it was like the Crumpled Hills. So um, it's just a wrinkled area um, of erosion I guess or um, fault lines I'm not too sure how it's all created but um, they call it the crumpled hills and somebody says uh, it needs a good iron <laughs> and then down in through the old valley here you can see all the windmill windmills I keep calling windmills wind turbines and um, they are uh, just to the uh, the east of Port Augusta oh well 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 I have been totally blown away by this little uh, botanical garden. They are beautiful little shrubs and especially uh, well set out with all the little names and labels and things. Pretty awesome. Neat little sundial here too. Um, this one here I've never seen before, but it does things like uh, you work out the, the equinox and you got these uh, fours through to 12 or something and uh, you can see the longer the longer the thing is obviously the, the summer time and then the shorter time is the winter and where the, uh, the hole is and it sh casts a shadow gives you the, that bit. Still really can't work it out as you can probably work out. And then sundial, oh, I got that one right. Anyway, we're going to go and have a look in the information centre and see what that's got in store. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Yeah, look, at the, look, at the, look at the beautiful, beautiful flowers on that. Wow. So we just popped into the little gift shop. It is pretty awesome. There's so much you can uh, get into here. There's some beautiful, uh, like, there's the woods of the native 
trees around. They've done in pens and butter knives and things like that. But I was mostly staggered by this little display here of um, a cross section of all the, um, or some of the uh, native timbers available here in Australia. And uh, I'll get a, a swing around to the other side of the camera so you can see it. But there's some beautiful, beautiful timbers. Have a look. a little rundown of some of the beautiful names this one here's called the golden stalk we've got the, the butterfly bush the creeping booberala something i think that says uh the hummock honey myrtle the backhouse australian fuchsia the spiny fanflower all i'm saying is that you know you look out and you go like yeah aussie bush Man, there's so many different varieties. Righty, just a little short drive again. I can't get over green grass. I haven't seen green grass for nearly two months. And you look at it and go like, surely it's painted on. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. Anyway, we have looked at this little spectacle. Oh, can you see it? There it is. I'm not too sure whether it's a, an old water tower that's been converted into a lookout or was a lookout, but we'll go and find out. As you can see, I've sent Jude up there to get a bit of a head start. So uh, we'll go and see what the view's like at the top. Let's go. Bit of a puff, I got there. It's um, yeah, not a bad little vantage point. Definitely looks like, I'll put it down as being a water tank, surely. And it's been converted into a lookout, so yeah, you get some pretty good views of uh, Port Augusta. Very nice, it's a pretty little town. It's got some uh, nice, obviously being out in the bush and things, it's nice to come back to some green grass and some trees and yeah, looks good. All right. That's me exercise there. Time to go and catch up on some shopping. Here we go. Here we go. Look and ye shall find. We came from another entrance and uh, didn't see the notice board. Anyway, there she is in her uh, former glory when she was built in uh, 1882. It was main use as a backup water supply. There was a little pipe where they used to barrel it in actually, but then they put in a little pipe and that was okay, but it was unreliable. So they had this built so it was a bit of a backup town water supply and also there for any firefighting and things like that. However, um, there was a, uh, a pipeline that was um, built and that was completed in 1944. So the water tower became redundant. So it sat there for a little while. It started deteriorating back in the 60s and there was a uh, thought of maybe pulling it down. Um, but they uh, banded together and thought, well, let's make a look at it out of it. There's a good view from there. so. That's what they've done. So back in the day, I think it was capable of holding uh, 87,000 litres. So there we have it. The water tower, I found about it. So just having a quick stroll around the streets of Port Augusta. How gorgeous are some of these vines? The sun's probably in the way. It's really, really pretty. 
active one on this side that isn't doing so well. And then we got this wicked Royal Flinders Hotel. Swing around and let's get a load of that. Beautiful uh, design work on that. Well, as promised, I said I'd uh, give you a uh, quick look around our um, our digs for the night. A couple of nights, actually. It's been so good here at uh, Port Augusta. Mind you, today the weather has uh, clouded over a bit, so uh, it'd bring the flannery out again. So anyway, it's uh, $10 a night. There is um, water that you can grab and fill up your van. There's a dump point over there as well, and I think there's probably enough parking for about say 15 vans, 20 vans, all depends on how you park, but ideally um, they say to park in between the, the white poles. So there we have the Port Augusta uh, Central Football Club, I believe. This is the grounds that they uh, allow us to use. So thank you very much. You can go over there. The meals are, are amazing and uh, so well priced. And uh, so the drinks at happy hour are good as well. Um, gun club nearby, pistol club. And um, yeah, quick walk down the, the road or drive down to um, all the service stations and um, uh, what is it, uh, Hungry Jack's down the road there. And a uh, quick little drive into town. So there we have it. Our place of yeah, accommodation for the last couple of nights. So we're gonna move on tomorrow. So uh, yeah, catch you down the road. See you soon. Oh, well, here's an interesting one for you. Yes, you can read right behind me. One, the patient, and two, yes, the emergency ward. Six Feeling a bit cold, later. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, six hours later. Yeah, she's had a little twinge in the neck, maybe extended from the uh, little slip that she had back in Alice, Alice we think. We're not too sure, but uh, anyway, uh, she's had some tests and she's. Uh, a little bit better, especially with a couple of little uh, little white pills have helped her. Eh? Yeah. So uh, yeah, she just had a good uh, visit to the Wyala Emergency Ward, and uh, a big shout out goes to uh, who do we have? Dakota. Dakota. She looked yep. after Jude very very well, and Dr. Basil. Yep, Dr. Basil. Nice nice work, you guys, okay. and Thank and the you. entire crew. You guys are really really busy, and uh, thanks for the great care that we've had here in Wyala. Thank you. We're down the road from Port Augusta, pulled into a place here called Wayala. It's about 84 something kilometers, I think it was, from where we were in Port Augusta. We drove through the town out to the other side where we're staying in Waruna at the uh, football club out there. And uh, yeah, go the Mighty Tigers, I believe, I should be supporting. So uh, we dropped the trailer off there, we'll come on back down here, because on our way through, we bumped into this. There's the motorhome there, and look at that. So we're here at the information centre, and there's this all go blimey mighty ship park there. That's the HMS Wyala. It started life here in Wyala as a flat piece of steel. As our drive through sort of showed that there is a steel works here, and of course they get deliveries from all the trains, from all the iron ore and bits and pieces, and yeah, believe it or not, they converted steel into that. So in 1941 that went into service and it was uh, in service until 1946. It spent a bunch of time doing, um, what was it, patrolling, um, some survey work and uh, probably did most of its time doing um, 
called Minesweeping. So uh, I think then from 1946 to about 1984, it was then used as a civilian vessel and it was doing uh, repairs and maintenance on a lot of um, lighthouses. And then after that, I think uh, between then it was offered for scrap. And that's when the, uh, the city here of Wyala thought, we'll pop it onto display. So I think they bought it for about 5,000 um, bucks, sailed it here where they um, created a dry dock and popped it in here for um, everybody to see. So it's apparently one of only two vessels that were made or did that type of role of work that are still left, I believe. So don't quote me on all of that, but that's the rough lowdown of it. Anyway, we'll go and see what else uh, we can find at the information, information center at Wyala. Yep, been in the information center. Liz there was fantastic, filled me in on all the details, got me a, a couple of little things that I hadn't found out. So we'll go and have a look at uh, the sites of... Nearly made it up Hummock Hill. There's a little bit further to go, but this is where I've just parked the motorhome for the, for the time being. Which gives you a great vantage point of, uh, I think it's a uh, iron ore loading area. There's uh, been some trains come on down and they're dropping um, stockpiles down over in the far side there. And then there's a loader down here whacking it onto a, a conveyor, I guess, or making sure he's pushing it on. Anyway, move on up further to Hummock Hill. Hummock Hill, here we are. Awesome viewpoint of the, uh, the town of Wyala and the Spencer Golf. In the Spencer Golf from Wyala over to this side here, there's a great uh, breeding area for giant cuttlefish. So uh, Wyala is known as the cuttlefish capital of the world. Um, this is a gun emplacement up the top here. Um, back in the day too, uh, Wyala um, managed to get iron ore from a place called Iron Knob, which we've gone past when we've uh, been driving from the Nullarbor. So uh, might have a look out there on the way back, see how we go for time. But um, iron ore is then railed into here of which some of it's taken for the steelworks which are over in the far side and there's also the port down here with the ship being loaded on the far side there and um, it's obviously bound for other places as well so uh, a pretty awesome little area there's a beautiful little uh, marina spot which um, hopefully we'll be able to have a little walk out down here on and have a look through the town that's where i'm off to next see you soon Good morning everyone, day two in Wyala and uh, yeah, Jude's making a uh, pretty good recovery. She's uh, keeping her neck pretty warm and a uh, bit of medication and taking it easy. A bit of walking is helping too for her. Anyway, um, yeah, let's say a little location here I've got. Um, I'm not a big reader, but uh, this is called the Loaded Dog um, Statue here. It's uh, outside one of the uh, local vets and uh, I suppose I'd better get reading one day. It's uh, Henry Lawson, I think it is. He's uh, one of Australia's uh, known um, poet and fictional writers. Um, he was 1887 or 1867, 1922. And uh, this uh, dog here called Loaded Dog is here in recognition of one of his stories, which apparently was pretty hilarious. And it sounds like it goes off with a bang, but uh, yeah, look it up if you're interested in reading or something. It's down here at the marina. Lovely day for it. And uh, looks like the old pelican's getting a nice feed from a local fisherman there. They're doing very well out of it. All right. A beautiful walk out here on Wyala's new jetty. It was opened in 2020. The old jetty that was here was built only 1975, but apparently in that time it became sort of a bit of a safety hazard. So they put it out to the townsfolk and said, what would you like it as a jetty? And they came up with this. Absolutely awesome. It's a circular jetty with a, an extension that goes out. It's about 165 meters long 
and uh, I think the old one was about 127 meters so it's a little longer but with this beautiful round feature in the middle and they light it up at night and apparently it's pretty spectacular so out here the old anglers can come out and uh, catch their squid and their prince George Whiting I believe not the King George my bloke down there just told me all about it um, I would still put the nicest jetty down to being the one in Esperance only because it had that beautiful little um, staircase down to a fishing platform. As far as looks goes, this is a much nicer looking jetty, but practicality, Esperance had a, had a nicer one, but uh, this is beautiful. It's in a beautiful tranquil spot out here, lovely beach over there. I've seen some seals and I believe some dolphins um, come about as well. So uh, a really nice spot out here on the uh, Waiala jetty. Come and have a look. Well, I did say the Esperance Jetty was pretty neat for fishing, but I'll tell you one neat feature they've done here for um, fisher people, especially those people that uh, need a little extra help with their fishing rods. So you can come up here either with the kids or if you're in a wheelchair and they've got this removable section so that people can pop their fishing rod out through the gap there. I reckon that's a, a really neat way. All right. So this is it, a nice street of Wyala, the dead giveaway, well, Graceland, Elvis shadow pictures, and danger, Elvis fan inside, yes, we have made, we made it. We've made it to Wyala the Elvis Museum. The museum is actually the guy's house. Peter, make sure you look him up. This is his front lounge. Absolutely covered with memorabilia. Coming through the hallway, more Elvis. The, the stories that Pete has to say here are just absolutely staggering. This man's got so much knowledge on Elvis. Main bedroom, spare bedrooms. He's got two spare bedrooms with lots of Elvis memorabilia. The bathroom. And here he's got a, one of the most rarest kind of shower curtains going, which is endorsed by Elvis's companies. Then we come on into the Hi, kitchen. This is Elvis Presley. Yeah, I met you before, Elvis. Come into the kitchen. <laughs> Struggle to make a cup of coffee in this place, but if you need a teapot, there's an Elvis teapot, salt and pepper shaker. Amazing. The, the presence that you feel here is just the guy, not only just Pete, but Elvis himself was pretty, oh, Pretty awesome. Out into his wash house. This is a wash house, toilet in the side here. And what do you know? Elvis is present. The, uh, going outside now. Out into here, into his outdoor area. He set up his garden area with his Elvis memorabilia as well. Got even Elvis, Elvis number plates on his daily ride. Pretty awesome. Nice little uh, selfie you can get down here in his backyard. He'll take the photo for you. Um, this is kind of like his recreation of Graceland out here with the lions and the cheer and everything. It's 
great story so you can tell me everything. And then we come into the man shed. Whoa! The man shed is pumping. Oh, I have a party out here, it's good. So he's got Elvis clothing, Elvis records, CDs, he's got a train set, toys, and you wouldn't have an Elvis house if it wasn't with one of Elvis's cars. Not well, the real deal, but pretty damn close to it. And you can get a selfie in there too. So do the pop some little prickies up. Awesome. This, this guy Pete is a damn good tribute to Wyala, I tell you. You've got to come here when you're uh, down in uh, the peninsula. Terrific. Right at you. <laughs> there he is. There's my mate Pete over there. We're in the sun, but uh, thanks Pete for the tour. Much appreciated. It's another restless night. I can't stop dreaming of you. Always got me in a spin. Yeah, you never make me blue Thinking about the way you walk To the way you call my name Another restless night Any other one to blame It always makes me sad To say goodbye at the end of the night But y'all be on my mind Way past the morning light That's alright, another restless night just dreaming about those things you do Another restless night Another cause by you